Okay, so I want to talk about the consoleizer a little bit more, and mostly I want to talk about the volume. I had kind of said something in the last couple of videos that I was going to work on this, and I did, and it just took a few minutes to figure it out, and I um, got it figured out to where we can have full volume output on the analog output right here, and you can remove the speaker. So basically the pot right here is, is labeled 1, 2, and 3, and then there's two pins that are not connected to anything and they're not labeled. And what I found was is pin 2 need to be connected to pin 3 to get full volume all the time. And you don't need to lay down a, a component leg or anything. It, it would kind of help. It was a little bit hard to get both bridge over that middle pin from 2 to 3. But I just kept adding more solder and working a little bit and it finally it finally made the bridge and also a little bit of a tidbit on the power switch this one was corroded you can see some corrosion right here around the battery contacts apparently a battery, a battery had vented and when I went to do the power bypass mod on it the very far left pad basically pulled off and some of the plastic had already like um, broken and disintegrated and when I took the top off I just kind of wiggled it off and then somehow that pad came with it well, anyway what I found was this um, there's a component here it's F1 so it's a fuse and since we're not going to be using batteries we can just bypass that fuse so there's a trace going from that far left pad on the power switch over to the right side of that fuse and I didn't trust that pad so I just desoldered the fuse off of it and soldered a little component leg from these from the left middle pads over to that pad for F1. I'll zoom in here a little bit more. So right here are, are the inner pads, and this is the left pad area that that just um, I believe got some corrosion onto it and just and just kind of flick, flaked off by itself. And this was where fuse one would be. So right there's fuse one. It looks like it has a J on it. So you can solder to either side of that if if you're having trouble with that left pad right here. This is normally what I'd go for, except this has a component leg in between the two pads, and now I'm just going for a solder blob from from the from the legs of the switch. And this is just so we don't have to worry about uh, well corrosion and just dirt in the switches and the pots. This has the top of off. This is the one I was using to try to ohm out where where to go with the solder blobs. So when you're doing a full case. I guess you could do this with the, with the LCD too. Uh, you definitely do the power bypass with the LCD with both versions, but with the LCD version where we just have the plastics up here, if you still wanted to use the volume pot, which I really don't recommend by this time, they're probably also corroded and dirty and not working well. You can just um, take your speaker, cut it off, wiggle it off, whatever, get the wires off of it, and then just blob it over to have full volume output here and then just use whatever volume control on your TV or whatnot. So I will put this back together a little bit here just to prove it and since I've done the power bypass switch this will automatically start coming on. So you can tell that was full volume right as soon as it has power and I can sit here the knob the volume knob is all the way down all the way to the right all the way back left makes no difference so there's proof of it, that it does work and it goes to full volume after bridging those three pads okay another little interesting tidbit about the power switch bypass um, like I just got done this one and I was so worried about this big blob going over to the inductor marked L1 right here, the big one. And I thought, you know, I wonder if those are connected anyway. And it turns out they are. 
So it's a surface mount, so there's a whole, there's two pads here, and I have, I've only seen ones that are have the uh, the normal pads, not these side pads. But this just means you can connect, you know, the left side of the fuse, the right side of the fuse, and whatnot right to that. And, you know, that makes me think too. I wonder if we could even bypass. Yeah, I'm not gonna get it on that one find another motherboard here that's not already been bypassed. Okay, so all I really need to do is to make sure that the pad of the inductor right here goes over to the one of the two middle pads of the switch. It does. So really, all you would need to bridge is that this uh, side of the fuse over to that, which doesn't have it now, and if, that, if my power switch was actually good, it would show that it does tone over there. Oops, that's the one I was blobbed on. So this one just has the pads. I can go from this side of the fuse to the blob to the inductor. Matter of fact, go to the back side of the inductor too. So yeah. Looks like you can just make a huge blob in there and just about connect everything around it. <laughs> and not have to worry too much. A little flux down. And yes, you do have to remove this part of the switch because you don't want it to come over and accidentally ground it out. And you could be nice and desolder all that stuff. I just, I know these are never going to be put back to factory condition, so I'm not too worried about it. So. Now I should have from battery positive here. Yep, that's excellent. That was even easier because those contacts are right up against the plastic and they're always super dirty. So, awesome. Okay, there's a little bit of a treat for you. Just look at the corrosion inside there. Oh, it's awful. I'm surprised the contacts aren't in worse shape. Uh, Audio jack is really bad shape. I have to make sure that one gets used by somebody that doesn't care about the analog audio output. Let's see, we got um, yeah, that was just a fiducial mark or something. But I did something on this one and it made it all the difference. So I changed this conical tip. It's a very fine point, but it made it so easy on the audio pod, I just kind of dragged it out and kept filling it with solder and it didn't pull it. it just left right there and uh, it did this kind of the same thing with the uh, the power bypass also going from the fuse to the inductor. Let's get it on that pad. Start adding solder, move it over to the use and voila. Double check. Yes, we do have continuity cross pins, and that's what we're looking for. So yeah, that, con that thin conical tip made doing those a lot, a lot easier than the uh, the blade. But the blade is still good for getting off of the uh, the crystal. Getting the crystal off is difficult with the conical tip. 
This might be the nastiest one I've found so far. I mean, it's uh, flaking off the solder mask. Ton of corrosion right there. Ton of corrosion up here. I mean, there was some even some in the, in the LCD cable. That's about the only blue I see is right there. I don't know if they. Yeah, I mean, there's blue all over the place, I guess, but. It's not like the typical battery corrosion. This will be a good indicator. If you if you look at your GBA and you see this, it may not be usable. I mean, look at that. That is awful. I had this one marked as no power, and now I know why. Okay, I think this is worth showing up close just so you have some idea before you get into this about getting this oscillator off and the way I've come to like to do it and it's because of these four components right here now I believe these two which would be I think C3 and R1 are the ones we're really worried about these two if they come off probably not a big deal because we're feeding a signal back to this pad which is connected to these comp two components and to what looks like CK1 that test pad right there but we're not doing anything with this pad down here which is connected to these two components but what I've been doing is taking my blade tip and making sure the back side is clean and maybe putting a little solder on this side of it and my my tip is a little dirty right on the end so this is a little extra difficult and I try to get it on both pads there and just let it sit and do the work and I'm not trying to put too much force on it and just flip it over now I had one where I was putting too much force on it and my blade came over and knocked these two components right off and then they are very tiny maybe 0201 or 0204 very difficult to get back on there but that's that's how I like to do it now. That's how I've been doing all of them. If they're the uh, the black oscillator and not the silver can one. I'm gonna do a different way of doing the the metal can oscillator. I've just been um, wiggling it off, just destroying it pretty much. It's so much faster. It's not even funny. And so far, I've not destroyed one single pad. Now, obviously, both legs came off on that time, but I've had one where the leg broke off just melt it off there, flick it off, no big deal. But that's way, way easier. This is uh, one of those boards that's not going to be used, but I've been um, wiggling the speaker off like that. That was in bad shape, so I'll probably just toss it. I don't actually know if there's a market for the used speaker. I think there's actually a better speaker people have been using, I'm not real sure. And on the the battery connectors, been holding with needle nose, kind of holding the board on on edge like that, and then just getting a hot. I got my big blade tip on there, just getting a hot, and mostly going down, but wiggling back and forth. And this one is usually a little bit more of a pain, but just push down with your needle nose and wiggle it just a little bit. They'll come out of there. Okay, for the units I'm going to send out to YouTube reviewers have actually went through and picked out the widest ones. See the difference there? These are much, much cleaner. But they're not as clean as I want them to be. You'll see a lot of um, hand soldered components on here and they leave a lot of flux behind. Like the shoulder buttons and the, was it the GameCube connector? and then whatever solder may or may not be left by your soldering you want to get off there too so I just have some rubbing alcohol this is actually uh, 100 100 percent 100 proof whatever you want to call it and I'll spray it down and I'll actually let it soak for a bit since I have a pile of them to do and then you can go in and you can just scrub with a toothbrush and if it's a big old chunk it'll probably flake off with a knife or something but this whole area is what will be visible 
uh, on a full case. So you want it to be as clean as possible. So I like to do the flux cleaning before I do soap and water. And unfortunately, whatever marking that is does come off. It's not a serial number or anything like that, but. Not too worried about the bottom. Um, it sure can't hurt to clean it. Especially if it's as dingy as these other ones. Seems like that's uh that's not the dingy one. Yeah, the dingy one. This would be the top, but it almost looks like these got uh, put in a room where somebody was smoking constantly. I don't know what it is, but you can tell where the rubbers kept the solder mask clean and everywhere else is got a yellow dinge to it. Um, but it'll help with soldering later. Get it all clean. Since this is the socket we're soldering the breakout board to. But it doesn't look like there's any kind of... Uh, yeah, that one might be hand soldered right there, the headphone jack. And this won't be the last time I'll spray rubbing alcohol in it anyway, because next I'm going to uh, put them under hot water, soap and water, and this is where I'll be shoving the credit card, the double credit card for this one, and bed sheet in here to clean the contacts. Something else to look at when you're buying these, if you see corrosion on the battery contacts, there's possible corrosion on the cart connector, and even though it's through hole, I think that's going to be a huge pain to replace. So I would just avoid it if you can. I doubt many sellers are going to tell you the truth if it's got if it's got corroded pins on there. But I buy these in bulk, so luckily I have uh, spares and uh, plenty to choose from. Especially since I have to get a bunch of these out soon. But yeah, uh, I probably won't show the soap and water cleaning, uh, the credit card cleaning. I mean, it's just very typical cart connector cleaning. But if this will get to actually soldering.